And here is the address he lived in Japan. That's Hiroshima Prefecture. And here is his name. And here is the birth date. So before the year, or till the year of 1970, we have the original nationality information. But a new one is quite different. For example, in the year of 1981, we only have the address in Japan and the name and the birth date, but we don't have original nationalities. So if we want to analyze the data, we can only use such common uh, information such as address, name, and birth date. We cannot use this uh, one for the uh, period since 1971. So here is the data we download from the internet uh, information service. We just arrange it as the Excel uh, database. Here is a number and here is the address and here is the name and here is the base date. So we divide, divide the period from 1947 to 2009 into six periods, almost 10 years in each period. And here is the uh, population of each period. Now we will, we will use the uh, total amount of 262,000 uh, persons data to uh, see what's the difference between uh, among each prefecture or the regional characters in Japan. Uh, here is the rank size of natural, uh, naturalized population by prefectures. So we can see Osaka stands on top of the 47 prefectures in Japan. And the second one is Tokyo. So it's quite different uh, to the population, Japanese population in Japan, because the Tokyo is the capital and it is the biggest city in Japan, but the amount of naturalized population is quite different. Tokyo is, all, is just the, the second one in Japan. And the third one is a Hyogo, and the fourth Kanagawa, and the fifth Aichi, and the Kyoto, Fukuoka, Saitama, and Chiba. So here I'd like to introduce the uh, regions in Japan. We have 47 prefectures in Japan. The uh, Hokkaido should be on the north of Tohoku. So we divide the 48, uh, 47 uh, prefectures into eight uh, regions. First, Hokkaido. Second, and Tohoku. And Kanto, Chugu, Kinki. Shikoku, Chiyongoku, Kyushu. Kyushu also includes Okinawa. So here we'd like to see the naturalized population by regions, by the eight regions. We can see the Kinki region increased very quickly in the recent years, and also Kanto, but Hokkaido decreased, and also Kyushu decreased quite significantly in the recent years. And here is the uh, distribution of naturalized population uh, for the first period from 1948 to 59. Now we can see there are uh, some Prefectures have the value above average 374. They are Tokyo, Osaka, Hokkaido, Fukuoka. So we, I just uh, show the prefectures by the, by the red points. And the second period.
and the third period. And in the third period, we can see that a lot of uh, naturalized population concentrated in the three metro, uh, metropolitan areas, such as Tokyo and Nagoya, or uh, Keihanshi, that means Kyoto and Osaka and Kyo, uh, Kobe. So here the third period, Tokyo stands on the top of the uh, 45, uh, 47 prefectures. But from the fourth period, Osaka becomes the best, uh, the highest one. And also for the fifth period, Osaka still stands on the top. And for the last period, also uh, Osaka stands on the <coughs> top of the 47 prefectures. So here we'd like to review the amount of each period. In the first period, the highest one is about uh, 3,000 and 500. The lowest one is just the five persons in the prefecture. But to the last periods, the gap between the lowest one and the highest one became quite bigger and bigger. So we still uh, calculated the uh, standard deviation of each period. And here, we'd like to know what's the difference of each prefectures. So I just uh, calculated the uh, approx uh, approximation li line by each prefectures. For example, here is the four uh, prefectures. This is Osaka from 1947 to 2089. And here is Tokyo. And here is Kyoto. And here is Hokkaido. But the R square is quite different by each prefectures. For example, Osaka and Tokyo have quite high values but the Hokkaido is very low. So we use such uh, data of, of each prefectures to draw such a graph. Here for the horizon is the value of slope of each prefectures to show the uh, trends. Is it increase or decrease? So and the uh, erect one shows the amount of naturalized populations. Here we divided it into eight uh, regions, Hokkaido, Chobu, Shikoku, Tohoku, Kinki, Kyushu, Kanto, and Chiyoku. So we can see the top one is the Kinki region, that is Osaka, and the second one is Tokyo, it is the Kanto. And to here, we cannot find any one prefectures from uh, Shikoku, also from Tohoku. That means the prefectures in Tohoku area, Tohoku region and Shikoku region uh, don't have such so many uh, naturalized population. And here is to enlarge this area. So from uh, this graph, we can know that Hokkaido is quite different from other uh, prefectures because the increase rates or the slope of it is minus. And for the data, we also can find some new information. For example, it is the information I just showed before. But if we use the address, we can know here is the individual. But the four person use the same address. That means they s live in the same address, their family. So we just uh, reorganized such data as uh, this one. 
we can get the information from household, who's individual and who's, uh, who's uh, in family. And we also have the uh, dates for their permissions. So if we, if we use the birth dates and the permission date, we can calculate their age. So here we can also uh, analyze the <coughs> trend by households such as individual information and fami uh, family information. So if we use the structure as that and draw a line under 50%, we know that individual person increased uh, and uh, it surpassed the uh, ratio of family. And here we can also use the information of age uh, to show which age group increased or decreased. So if we sh see this graph, we can know in the first period or second period, teenagers increased quite much. But in the rest of the years, the people's in 30s and 40s increased rather than teenager and under 10 years old. And by this uh, graph, use the uh, age group and the six periods, we know that uh, trend quite uh, clearly. For example, here increased quite much, but here decreased quite much. And also, such uh, old people in 50 years old, they also increased in the rest of the years. It is stable here this period, but it, it increased here. Okay, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this presentation is based on very detailed uh, uh, data of naturalization uh, obtained in Japan. Uh, please ask questions or comments if you have. How can we, uh, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. How can we understand that the Osaka area has uh, much more improved in naturalization than the Tokyo area. The Tokyo area shouldn't be the more um, pluralistic, perhaps uh, international area, or is it more the, the uh, economic growth of Osaka? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon in Japan. Because in Osaka and Kyogo and Kyoto, it's the neighbor prefectures, three neighbor prefectures. And uh, before 1945, a lot of Korean people was brought, up, uh, uh, was brought from Korea, Peninsula to work in Japan. They gathered there and lived there. So m maybe their parents just to keep their career nationalities, but their children uh, one, uh, was born in uh, Japan, and they want to get you uh, get to be a member of the Japanese society. So maybe their children naturalized to be as a Japanese nationalities. Mm. Maybe that's a, that's the reason for that. Well, yes. Economic or not an economic induced also? No, I don't think so. Yes, Taiga. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have a little question regarding this uh, age uh, structure, and maybe you can find, uh, maybe you did find uh, some concentration of yo young naturalized people or elderly one, maybe somebody elderly go to some uh, one area, some young, uh, young or mature people go to other ones. Did you find any geographical concentration or it's equally, the all groups are equal distributed through the country? Yeah, I I it's a good question. Yes, I tried to find the geographical distribution of each uh, group, but, um, 
when I analyze the data of each prefecture, it almost uh, shows the same trends, just the same trend with this one. Uh, in, the in the earlier periods, young people naturalized, but in the rest of the years, 30s and 20s and 40s and 50s uh, increased much more than the young people's. So we cannot, inc we analyzed it, but we didn't find any um, geographical uh, characteristics of that. Maybe we, uh, I can try another uh, method, or <coughs> if you have good knowledge, you can <laughs> uh, t tell me. Okay. I have a question. Uh, well, uh, well, according to your uh, analysis uh, presented today, uh, well, the data is uh, used uh, only for uh, one variable, such as address, age, and so on. But uh, you uh, have not uh, pursued a cross-tabulation, for example, between age and prefecture and so on. So uh, such a uh, more uh, detailed analysis may be very, very interesting from geographical perspective. Oh, so yes, I hope so. So, uh, you know, it is uh, quite a big amount of uh, data, so <laughs> it takes uh, me a lot of time to analyze it. For example, uh, I, I'd like to show the... Because the amount is the <laughs> more than yeah, 250,000 uh, people. So it takes me a lot of time to uh, arrange it. Uh, but I hope I can do some further research just as you advised. And, and, and can I have some uh, explanation for the uh, cross question? By the level of prefectures, Osaka is quite higher than Tokyo. But if we compare the cities level, by city levels, Osaka is lower than Tokyo 23 wards. So that's a quite a, uh, uh, interesting phenomenon. That means Osaka maybe they distribute it in the suburban area or small, uh, small cities, small towns. But in, C uh, in Tokyo, a lot of, uh, yes, foreign peoples or naturalized peoples gather in the center of the Tokyo cities. So the next step, I should divide it it's into each cities, not just by the prefectures. In fact, I tried to show the data this time, but you know, I, I was a little bit uh, busy in my summer vacation, so I just not can, uh, I failed to do that, so. Uh, you have a very detailed uh, address information. Yes. And today's presentation is limited to the uh, special, special uh, level or prefecture. But uh, uh, since you have a very detailed uh, information uh, under a prefecture level, so you can pursue more very complicated uh, investigation so far. Yeah. Do you have any idea about it? Yes. Uh, for example, we have the address. So this morning, I just uh, found here by the address. So that means we can find the beauty by, the, by this address. So just as Professor Ishikawa mentioned, uh, we can use this information to show which area of the city uh, the foreign people gathered there. Is there any difference between Chinese and the Korean people? So it's the next step we should do for this research. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, otherwise we'd like to uh, prepare coffee time, okay? Until 5.30 as schedule. Uh-huh. So I think that it should be enough for now. Can you see a response? Hi, good afternoon. 
<laughs> so coffee break until 5.15, okay? 30 minutes, okay. Uh, time zone. And uh, actually this time zone uh, started in Rome, uh, not in uh, Greenwich, but exactly in Rome. And uh, I would like uh, to invite the uh, first uh, s speaker today. It's uh, Michali uh, Tom Tomori uh, from Debrecen University in Hungary. And he will present the paper investigating human mobility and the economic in the Deborah Ora Metropolis a case study of shopping tourism in Debrecen and Oradea. The floor is yours. Michali, uh, start. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Zaga Krishiana. I come from uh, Latvia, University of Latvia, and Department of Human Geography. So thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Mihai Timberi. I'm a PhD candidate at the Department of uh, Social Geography and Regional Development Planning at the University of uh, Debrecen, Hungary. And uh, today, I'm going to speak about uh, an empirical study conducted in two neighboring cities on opposite sides of the Hungarian and Romanian international border, namely Debrecen and Oradea. I've prepared this presentation together with uh, Professor Istvan uh, Shulizakar. Unfortunately, he uh, hasn't been able to be here uh, today, but uh, anyway, he wishes us a successful conference. So first of all, let's see the outline of the presentation. First of all, I would like to introduce the importance uh, of the topic of shopping tourism. Then I would like to define the notion of shopping tourism. After that, I will go on to speak about the role of borders and cross-border relations uh, in connection with uh, shopping tourism. In the second half of the presentation, I will introduce the major uh, research uh, results uh, of our empirical study. And finally, the main conclusions and suggestions. The international literature shows that shopping is one of the most favored activities uh, undertaken by tourists. Uh, and shopping uh, often serves as the primary or the sole motivation behind uh, tourist trips. Uh, in millions of uh, foreigners uh, and uh, millions of Hungarians uh, travel abroad uh, or, or arrive in Hungary, whose primary purpose is uh, shopping. Shopping tourists' uh, annual spending reaches uh, approximately 1.4 billion euros uh, each year in Hungary. The spending of uh, shopping tourists uh, contribute uh, to the retail turnover of, uh, of the retail sector and through tax revenues, it also contributes uh, to the central uh, budget. The topic of uh, shopping tourism is, is, is especially current uh, uh, within the European Union and uh, especially within the Schengen area since uh, one of the major aims and goals of the European Union is uh, to create the Europe without borders, that is, a borderless Europe. And if we know that one of the most important preconditions of uh, shopping tourism is that borders should be open and easy to cross, uh, so in this way we can easily conclude that uh, the European Union and especially the Schengen area creates uh, especially favorable conditions for shopping tourism. Uh, shopping tourism is a well-known phenomenon virtually all over uh, the world. However, its scientific uh, interpretation is uh, not uh, so easy, uh, not so straightforward, because uh, it is a quite complex uh, phenomenon, which uh, requires a multidisciplinary interpretation, whereby the research results of several sciences such as economics, sociology, the regional science, tourism, geography, etc., have to be taken into account. 
The international literature on shopping tourism distinguishes between two major categories. The first one is called shopping tourism. The second is called tourist shopping. In the first case, shopping is the primary or the sole motivation of the trip, which is often a business-driven activity. A special or unique type of uh, shopping tourism is called cross-border shopping or cross-border shopping tourism, which occurs near international borders, and it is often driven by economic, legal, and social differences on opposite sides of an international uh, border. In the second case, uh, shopping serves as a secondary or complementary activity because the tourist trip is primarily motivated by something other than shopping, for example, by some bathing, ecotourism, visiting museums, sightseeing, etc. Uh, shopping tourism is one of the most important forms of uh, cross-border uh, relations, uh, and I has and as I have already mentioned, uh, one of the most important preconditions of shopping tourism is that borders should be open and uh, easy to uh, cross. One of the major goals of European politicians in Western Europe was to promote uh, Eu uh, the European integration uh, process uh, and in order to create uh, the unified uh, Europe. However, we shouldn't forget that the European integration process uh, was constrained only to Western Europe uh, for a long time, at least before the fall of the Iron uh, Curtain. In Western Europe, uh, Euro regions and Euro metro policies were formed several decades ago in order to promote uh, cross-border uh, cooperation and to overcome the difficulties caused uh, by the national borders and to create uh, a unified uh, Europe. The European integration process uh, has proved to be successful uh, in Western Europe and uh, uh, numerous Euro regions uh, have been forming uh, now along the borders of Central and Eastern European countries uh, as the European integration process uh, has gradually spread over to Central and uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, in this respect, uh, the initiative of uh, Debrecen and Arada to neighboring cities on opposite sides of the Hungarian-Romanian border to create a cross-border Eurometropolis called the, the Bora Eurometropolis uh, is an excellent example of cooperating uh, city borderland cities uh, along uh, the borders of uh, the new uh, EU member states. Um, Debrecen lies in the north-eastern uh, parts of Hungary, approximately 30 kilometers uh, west of the Hungarian-Romanian international border, while Oradea lies in the northwestern parts of Romania, approximately 10 kilometers east uh, of the Hungarian-Romanian uh, border, and both uh, cities have a population of around 200,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, uh, now let's see this uh, the Bora uh, cross-border Eurometropolis. Uh, the Institute for Euro Regional Studies, Germany European Center of Excellence, was, which was created jointly by the University of Debrecen, Hungary, and the University of Oradea, uh, Romania, has contributed uh, to the establishment and the development of uh, this cross-border Eurometropolis with uh, significant uh, research results. Uh, our research areas uh, include uh, human resources, accessibility, infrastructure, tourism, and so on, and of course, uh, cross-border retailing and uh, shopping tourism. Today in this presentation, I'm going to speak about only one of uh, one aspect of these uh, research results, namely cross-border retailing and shopping tourism in the two uh, cities. Uh, the two cities uh, provide favorable conditions uh, for shopping uh, tourism, uh, at least in uh, theory. Because, first of all, because uh, both cities lie near the Hungarian-Romanian international border. Second, both cities possess a developed uh, retail sector with many shops, stores, and modern uh, shopping malls. 
and both uh, cities uh, function as important uh, tourist destinations visited by tens of thousands of tourists uh, in each uh, year. Now let's see. Now let's see uh, the research uh, goals and uh, questions. First of all, uh, our study uh, aimed to estimate foreign shoppers' volume or demand in the two cities. Second, to examine the spatial and temporal aspects of shopping tourist demand. In other words, uh, when and where do they come from? Third, to explore their behavior or shopping habits. And fourth, to, identi to identify those factors that may influence uh, the volume of uh, their uh, demand. Now let's see the research uh, methodology. First of all, we have to state that uh, doing research in uh, shopping tourism is quite uh, difficult uh, because no official uh, statistics uh, exist uh, in this field. That is why a standard questionnaire survey was uh, applied in both cities with the same uh, methodology between October 2010 and February 2011. In the course of the research, shop assistants, shopkeepers, and uh, managers were asked uh, to answer these uh, questions uh, because it was presupposed that they are the ones who possess the most relevant information about this uh, special consumer uh, segment. Altogether, 312 questionnaires were filled in the two cities, out of which 280 in Debrecen and 104 in Oradea. It became uh, evident already at the beginning of the research that both cities uh, possess a complex structured retail structure, so we had to select uh, areas for uh, study. In this respect, we concentrated our attention to two retail environments. The first one uh, is uh, the traditional inner city retail environment, and the second one is uh, the modern uh, shopping uh, environment represented by modern shopping malls. In Debrecen, the high street of the city was selected for study, which is called the Pia Street or the Market Street in English, and uh, two shopping malls, the Forum Shopping Mall and the Tesco Hypermarket. In Oradea, the Republic Street, which is the high street of the city, was selected for study, and four other shopping malls, the Pushal Center, Lotus Center, Real Hypermarket, and Carrefour Hypermarket. Now let's see uh, the major uh, research results. Uh, First of all, the proportion of foreign shoppers is examined uh, within the total number of uh, shoppers. Uh, we can see that uh, research results uh, show that um, the share of uh, shopping tourists uh, is uh, quite low in uh, both uh, cities. In two-thirds or three-quarters uh, of the cases, their proportion is below 10% uh, uh, or 5%. Uh, However, there are huge differences uh, among uh, different shops, so in some cases their proportion reaches 40 or even 50% in some of the retail units. Uh, we can also see that the share of foreign customers uh, is somewhat higher in the case of Debrecen than in Oradea. Uh, now where do they come from, so where do these foreign customers come from? If we examine uh, their origin according to continents, we can see a really wide uh, spectrum. Uh, shopping tourists uh, arriving in Debrecen and Oradea come from all regions uh, of the world except for uh, Latin America. Obviously, the majority of these foreign customers come from European uh, countries. Within Europe, uh, we can see that the majority of foreign customers uh, arrive from the neighboring uh, Hungary and uh, Romania, so research results prove that cross-border shopping uh, is the most important element of uh, this uh, phenomenon. The second most uh, important uh, group of foreign customers uh, comprises uh, German-speaking uh, countries such as Germany and or Austria in both uh, cities. In Debrecen, uh, the structure of foreign customers uh, is uh, highly influenced by the geographical proximity because uh, we can see that neighboring countries uh, play a dominant role, such as the Ukraine, Russia, uh, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and uh, Poland. 
in a rather, on the other hand, uh, cultural factors play a more dominant role since uh, shopping tourists arriving from countries using a neo-Latin language uh, was uh, quite uh, substantial, such as uh, customers arriving from Italy, Spain uh, and France. Uh, on the basis uh, of our research results, uh, we can distinguish between four categories of uh, foreign customers. The first and most important category comprises cross-border shoppers. Uh, so they are coming from Hungary or coming from uh, Romania and go shopping uh, in the two uh, neighboring uh, cities. The second category comprises uh, tourist shoppers. Uh, they arrive primarily from uh, European countries. The third category comprises university students who study uh, mainly medicine at uh, the University of uh, Debrecen. And they come from basically three regions of the world. The first is uh, the Middle East, uh, especially from Israel and Iran. The second is North America, uh, within that from the USA and Canada and from certain European countries uh, such as Norway. And the fourth uh, group of uh, foreign customers comprised uh, immigrants. Uh, their share was quite marginal in both uh, cities and uh, they contained uh, mainly Chinese, uh, Asian immigrants and African immigrants. If we examine the temporal uh, aspects of foreign customers, uh, uh, research results uh, show that uh, the majority of respondents uh, in both cities uh, is of the opinion that uh, there isn't any difference uh, between the volume of foreign customers uh, between uh, weekdays and uh, weekends. On the other hand, uh, most uh, of the respondents uh, think that there, is a s there are seasonal differences uh, within a year uh, in the number of foreign customers. Uh, most of them uh, think that the volume of foreign customers is higher during uh, the summer and uh, before public or religious uh, holidays. According to them, this can be due uh, to the increase in the number of tourists uh, during the summer and before public or religious uh, holidays. If we examine uh, the changes uh, in the number of foreign customers, uh, we can see a difference uh, between uh, the two cities. The relative majority of respondents in Debrecen, that is 35%, uh, think that there has been a rise in the number of foreign customers uh, in the past few years, uh, while in Oradea, uh, the relative majority of respondents, that is uh, 43%, think that there has been a decline in the number of uh, foreign customers. Now let's see. Uh, what can be the reasons uh, behind uh, these changes? Uh, first of all, uh, retailers, both uh, in Debrecen and uh, Oradea, uh, say that uh, low prices or relatively lower prices uh, play a role in the increase uh, of foreign customers. The second uh, common uh, aspect uh, is that uh, retailers in both cities uh, mentioned the positive effects uh, of the European uh, integration process, uh, which has made border crossing uh, easier and uh, new member states uh, better known. In Debrecen, retailers also mention the positive effects of famous brands and stores, the wide selection of goods, the proximity of borders, favorable exchange rates, and the VAT increase in Romania. In Oradea, retailers also mention the positive effects uh, of the affluent foreign customers uh, because they think that foreign customers are generally more uh, affluent, more wealthy than uh, domestic customers. Uh, and they also think uh, that uh, their uh, marketing strategy, uh, strategy targeting uh, foreign customers uh, has also had a positive effect uh, on the volume of foreign customers. Uh, now let's see the negative uh, effects. Uh, First of all, uh, retailers in both cities uh, think uh, that uh, the negative uh, impacts of the economic crisis uh, on uh, purchasing power uh, was a result of, uh, of the decrease in the number of foreign customers. And the second uh, common uh, answer was uh, the general decline in tourism 
uh, of course, due to uh, the economy crisis uh, again. In Debrecen, uh, inner city re uh, retailers uh, also pointed out uh, the negative impacts of uh, shopping malls uh, on their uh, retail turnover. And in Arada, uh, retailers also mentioned that uh, the VAT increase in Romania, which resulted in a general rise in prices, also created unfavorable conditions for uh, shopping uh, tourisms, uh, tourism. Now let's see the main conclusions and suggestions uh, based on the research uh, results. Uh, first of all, uh, results show that the proportion of foreign customers is uh, relatively low in both uh, cities, despite the fact that both cities provide favorable conditions uh, for shopping tourism. So uh, both uh, cities uh, uh, should uh, strengthen their marketing strategy targeting uh, especially foreign uh, tourists. And second, they should create a shopping guide uh, which would inform uh, tourists uh, about the major attractions, uh, accommodation facilities, uh, and of course, uh, the most important uh, shopping opportunities. Second, uh, cross-border shopping tourism dominates in both uh, cities. So that is why uh, cross-border tourism projects uh, should be elaborated and implemented uh, in order to uh, make the two cities uh, better known uh, along uh, the borderland uh, areas. Third, research results prove that uh, tourist shopping plays an important role in both cities, especially during uh, the summer. So in this way, uh, local governments uh, should try to extend the summer season, for example, through organizing events or uh, festivals. And fourth, uh, we can see that uh, shopping tourism is highly influenced, the volume of uh, shopping tourism is highly influenced by outer uh, factors, that is uh, global or national uh, factors. Uh, that is why the scope of action of local actors, local retailers, governments uh, is very uh, limited. That is why they should uh, concentrate on local tourism uh, development. Uh, and finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for in very interesting insights in this cross-border uh, relations and uh, as well shopping. Uh, any questions? Uh, comments? Yes, please. Thank you very much for your presentation. I was very much interested in your category of cross-border tourists. And I have uh, one first question concerning only this um, profile of people. Is there uh, their first uh, activity, is, there, is this their first economic activity, or is this something they just do uh, on an uh, occasional basis? And I have two very little questions linked to this one. If this is their first um, activity, um, do you believe is it still a good thing to call them tourists? And I know in anthropology we are doing some research in, in the same um, kind of direction, but there is very specific um, uh, concept to define tho those people, and they are more seen as um, yeah, economic actors than really um, tourists. So, well, this is the, the, the main question. Thank you. Thank you. As for the first question, uh, I think uh, there is a group of foreign customers uh, whose uh, primary or sole purpose is uh, shopping. So they arrive uh, in, in the two uh, cities, uh, uh, they just go uh, shopping, and uh, when they uh, done this shopping, they just uh, go away. Uh, however, there are also uh, shoppers who can be called uh, tourists uh, because uh, they uh, visit uh, the museums, uh, the sites uh, of the two cities, um, or they go uh, bathing, and uh, they connect uh, this tourist activity with uh, shopping. So in uh, their case, uh, shopping serves as a secondary or complementary activity besides uh, doing other tourist uh, activities. Um, what was the second question? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, th this, this is a, a very uh, difficult question, and I'm afraid I won't be able to answer uh, that question because uh, scientists uh, are, are arguing uh, about uh, these uh, things to where to put uh, the border, the limit, uh, <laughs> and uh, who to call a tourist uh, or not to call a tourist or call it uh, cross-border shopping instead of uh, shopping tourism. So it's, uh, it's a quite uh, difficult question. Some authors uh, suggest that uh, it should be regarded uh, tourism because uh, people uh, travel abroad, they use uh, the tourism infrastructure, they spend uh, money abroad. Uh, others argue that it shouldn't be regarded uh, tourism because it is only a business-driven activity and uh, it, is, uh, it only lasts uh, for the duration of uh, shopping. So it's quite difficult. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, actually, we have uh, uh, five minutes. Yes. Um, <coughs> I mean, I think that uh, from the anthropological point of view, you can define whatever you want. But uh, from, uh, you know, we have also statistic problems. Um, I could imagine that someone is flying over um, the... Um, uh, the Romanian side of the board because it could be uh, cheaper and then they are going to make shopping on the other side. So it is also, it is a problem to identify if really they are tourists. So if uh, by, by the international statistical office uh, they are at least spending one night there. And the second, if they are tourists, where are they tourists? Because if they are spending day night uh, on one side of the border and then they go shopping on the other side, I mean, it doesn't change the importance of your, the relevance of your research. Uh, it changes only the necessity of using such a terminology that uh, we use in different way, because these borders, and uh, our friend knows very well the story of the borders, because uh, um, these borders are now very, 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 very different from the past, and uh, tomorrow, uh, surely, during the field trip, I show you some other kinds, some new kinds of uh, borders that we have in Rome. Rome is not a border city. Uh, another point is that, uh, again, uh, I just uh, anticipating tomorrow, is that uh, all these uh, uh, kind of tourists are very interesting, are very useful, are very probably they are more interesting for some for some part of the society, not for the others. And then my question could be. Uh, which kind of changes are happening in these uh, cities? Are they improving or lowering their characteristic, their importance, their cultural heritage, and so on and so on? Thank you. Um, well, my answer is uh, that uh, the two uh, governments, the two local governments, uh, do not see any significant potential in uh, shopping tourism. So they do not uh, do, uh, do marketing uh, in this area, so they do not regard uh, this uh, aspect of uh, tourism or uh, activity, shopping activity, as an important uh, aspect. Uh, but I think that uh, the European integration, so that uh, these uh, countries uh, have become members of uh, the European uh, Union, uh, it, was, it is good uh, for these uh, countries and good for these uh, cities because uh, they have become better known and uh, I think more tourists uh, visit these uh, countries or these cities uh, in this way because um, mm, they are uh, just uh, curious about uh, our new culture and heritage and cities. Uh, thank you. I will use uh, first my questions and you can take yours. Actually, uh, for me, it's quite interesting. I see in Oradea is Italians in third place since foreigners. For me, it's very interesting. What uh, could the Italians buy in Oradea shopping? Uh, tourists? And uh, second is more the, uh, general questions already. Which kind of goods or products are uh, 
select uh, are sold or uh, for uh, sold uh, for uh, foreign tourists. As for the first uh, question, uh, there is a traditional link, um, I would say, between the two countries, between Italy and Romania. I mentioned uh, the similarity of, of the, the, the two uh, languages. And uh, Italians uh, visit uh, Romania and within that uh, Orada in uh, greater numbers. Uh, so, uh, so they are primarily tourists uh, who go there to um, sightseeing or climbing uh, mountains uh, or to see uh, the beautiful uh, nature. And uh, in this way, they also go uh, shopping uh, in Oradea, for example. Um, the second question, uh, we asked uh, respondents to, to tell us uh, what uh, shopping uh, tourists uh, buy or what uh, do they uh, look for, but uh, results were not uh, relevant, <laughs> unfortunately, because uh, we got uh, answers, for example, in uh, shoe shops uh, that uh, they are looking for shoes or in uh, clothes shops, uh, they are looking for clothes. Uh, so they were not uh, specific enough uh, to be uh, elaborated. Uh, however, two uh, major aspects uh, can be uh, highlighted. Uh, the first uh, is that uh, shopping tourists uh, were looking for uh, branded items, uh, that is, uh, the products of famous brands. And uh, the second uh, aspect uh, is that they were looking, authentic, looking for authentic souvenirs uh, representing uh, the culture, the tradition of uh, the country or the city they uh, visited. For example, in uh, Orada, Romania, they, uh, shopping tourists were looking for Dracula souvenirs, uh, which is an emblematic uh, item of uh, Romania. Uh, or in, hung in Hungary, uh, the Hungarian uh, porcelains uh, were quite uh, popular. Uh, I am um, saying another thing. I live in Varese at 8 kilometers from Swiss border, 25 kilometers from Lugano. And also in this area, there are many exchanges between the two uh, border regions. But uh, uh, I was thinking uh, about this. While Swiss people come to Italy for shopping, uh, uh, for Franco, very high, for, uh, uh, for food and so on, uh, Italian people go there for a real tourism. Uh, Casino, uh, Lugano, Campione, uh, uh, Lake tourism, arts, uh, and so on. I think that uh, uh, le loisir, uh, l'activité de l'amusement, uh, uh, this uh, is more connected with tourism than the other one more connected with price. Italy is fine for the Swiss men, Rome, Flores, and so on. Uh, not our area, who has an imagine of a poorer state than Switzerland, uh, an area uh, only where to buy. And if I go only where to buy, may I consider it tourism? This uh, is a question. Uh, yes, this has uh, been already addressed by uh, Professor Montanari, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yes. Uh, just uh, to uh, open a discussion tomorrow, don't forget that I answer, my, I give my interpretation to Zeiger. There are thousands of Italian companies there, producing there because it's cheaper. So you have a lot of Italians there, there, and because they're there, they could be interested to buy local products done under the names of Italian companies. Oh, otherwise, they are also interested in local products. But uh, this is another major aspect of a uh, huge mobility that there is in Europe, 
producing because it's cheaper to produce, then since you are there, you are going to do something else and eventually also tourism, why not? Um, I, think, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mihaly already for a very interesting uh, presentation. I actually, in my comment will be maybe, uh, I, I know that in tourist uh, geography I used the uh, word uh, visitors. Uh, <laughs> you can use shop visitor. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will have a next presentation uh, from about uh, uh, Southeast uh, Sicily. And could I invite, oh, thank you. And maybe you can introduce yourself. Uh, I'm not sure if I will pronounce uh, correctly Italian uh, names. It will be a Baltic in interpretation, please. Just for the preceding uh, presentation, could be we, call, we can call them uh, commuters, not tourists, commuters. We'll see. I am uh, Gianluigi Corinto. My colleague Salvatore Candizzaro is now in Catania because there is a concurrent uh, uh, conference now of geographer. I am uh, an agroeconomist and Candizzaro is uh, a geographer. We prepared uh, a paper, can the Southeast Sicily Horticultural District benefit of migrant workers to achieve an efficient internationalization pattern? Uh, the aims uh, uh, was to understand uh, the future of a local labor market uh, in a specific area of Sicily, the Southeast Sicily Horticultural District. I explain later the meaning of uh, horticultural district uh, because uh, there is uh, local fishers and also migration. A uh, lot of uh, migrating people that uh, uh, find jobs there. Uh, but another mm, aim of uh, our research is to understand the level of internationaliz internationalization of the produc local production, the horticultural production. And because we have uh, 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 some sort of mismatching between the European Union policies and the national policies, uh, we can simplify in uh, free trade uh, against versus protectionism. And so to respond uh, to our question, uh, we start a brief uh, uh, introduction about the Barcelona Declaration that is uh, a, a European Mediterranean strategy to make partnership with the southern coast of uh, Mediterranean area. Uh, in this Barcelona Declaration, uh, um, there is high ethical aims, very high ethical aims. Uh, uh, that means market cooperation and competition. It is close to state, uh, closer relations between the uh, European uh, Union and the, the Mediterranean countries uh, by a comprehensive plan, a cooperation mechanism to contrast illegal migration and human beings trafficking. Uh, but this market cooperation is linked and uh, strictly with other European policies uh, because in all agreement, international agreements that uh, EU concludes uh, with non-member countries, uh, mm, it includes always the dedicated section on migration, migration with non-member countries concerning more on efficient measure to control migration than plan strategic action to combat human rights vi violation. So uh, we can uh, see a contemporary uh, policy at uh, a European level, free market, and the national level, and we in Italy, we know it very well in this, in this moment, in these hours, in uh, Lampedusa Isle, uh, that uh, 
an economic point of view, we can uh, call it the protectionism. 